How are you going to line up the audio correctly? No, it's because you yeah. line up no, I, the I, I audio with reason the video it, really on one camera, it. and you line up the next camera. Does he really need camera. to do it here? You don't have to see them all at once. It's going to be awesome. We've rarely done it. Yeah. This is going to be great. Oh, yeah. I think it's because they're doing something different. That's copyrighted. When I win the hometown award, they're going to offer to fly me out. Because I'll be like, I don't know if I'm coming. They're like, oh, we'll pay for it. it. And I'm like, oh, I mean, I think he's sure, it. I could come. And receive the award, but it, it seems you know, we might have to get a hotel room. They're like, oh, we'd get you a hotel room. And I'm like, well, I I don't like the or I mean, most hotel rooms are kind of small. And they're like, oh, we'll get you a suite. And I'm like, and I mean, in most hotel rooms, there's no choice of which shower you use. And they're like, we'll get you a suite with two. Oh, hey, everyone. Uh, I, I was talking about what, what we're going to do after this show wins a hometown. Because uh, I've. For those of you who don't know, the hometown is a video award given out to people not named Keith. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's in the fine print. A lot of people miss that. Uh, but it, you know, much like the Nobel Prizes, which were awarded in all the scientific categories except mathematics, because Nobel's first wife ran off with a mathematician, making him angry at mathematicians for the remainder of his life, uh, the hometowns were started by a gang of Keith haters. Um, <laughs> not just people with the first name of Keith, they also hated people with the last name of Keith. They were, you know, willing to hate anyone. Um, uh, for those of you at home that are seeing the show, uh, uh, tonight we're trying something new. I'm told it's called glamour lighting. <laughs> uh, they have carefully lit me with uh, filters and in special tubes. Um, and they, they had an, a whole array of sensors over here, uh, and scientists and people in white coats. Um, uh, and a lady came out and was very carefully trimming the eyebrows, uh, to make sure that the glint from the glamour lighting off the stray eyebrows would not, uh, if you at home are just totally in love with me, now you know why. <laughs> it's the glamour lighting. Uh, I am taken. Um, so, sorry ladies, um, but we, we do understand why, why you are suddenly in, in love with your television. <sighs> um, Loretta asked me briefly to mention what I have bought on Woot lately and what I have not been allowed to buy on Woot lately. <laughs> and here's the thing. I... I don't remember what I have not been allowed to buy on Woot lately. <laughs> Which for the average person would be, oh, you just have a bad memory. But for me, it also could be I haven't been forbidden to buy anything on Woot lately. And I have a bad memory. So I can't remember what I was not allowed to buy on Woot. I think I made it through the last Woot off and only bought one thing. But I don't remember what it was. Wine glasses. Wine. Well, that yeah, that that wasn't the last Woot off though. I did buy the. I was I was looking at Woot during. Well, maybe it was the last Woot off. Come to think of it, and they had this. They were like large wine glass, and I'm like, I drink wine, and they looked at the picture, and then you know how they put something in the picture to try to give you a sense of scale, and the picture they tried to put a quarter, except. This was like a two and a half foot tall wine glass. So the quarter is just this tiny little dot down in the corner. And, the, and they're like, it's like quarter for size. And I'm like, that's not helping people. <laughs> Why don't you just say, oh, look, they say it's 24 inches tall. And I'm like, that's a wine glass. That's a heck of a wine glass. So I bought three of them. Because <laughs> what if, I mean, here's the problem with Woot, right? You... You can buy one, or you can buy two, or you can buy three. And you're like, man, that's a very tall wine glass, and it's not crazy expensive. What if when I get it, I really like it? I'm never going to find another place that sells very large wine glasses, but and I'll only have one. And then what if I lose it in my house? <laughs> <laughs> and I, 
I've lost things two and a half feet tall in my house before. <laughs> um, those of you that watch this show probably believe that. <laughs> um, so I, I, I'll buy three, and then we gave one away as a gift to an alcoholic friend of ours. Oh! <laughs> well, she's not diagnosed. <laughs> it's not legal. Like, there's no court order involved. It's, it's, She's just very comfortable with alcohol, which I totally understand because not in a wood off, but I bought an automatic drink making machine. <laughs> you're like, oh, what is that, Keith? And it's it's like a freaking robot with tubes and numbers and a Wi-Fi. <laughs> so you can sit in your couch and go, I would like a dry martini and push the button. And then you have to run because there's probably not a glass under it. <laughs> you have to run across the room and get a glass under it. It would go, we're going to squirt in some gin. We're going to squirt in some, I don't know what's in a margarita. Or I don't know what's in a dry martini. I mean, gin and vodka, I think. But I don't know what the proportions are. But I can program the computer and then every time, a perfect, well, it can't shake things. Um, <laughs> but I, I, I know how to shake things. I've got a shaker. Uh, actually, I've got three of them. Because I bought them <laughs> Sensing a problem here. <laughs> and I am running out of space in my attic to store things. So, okay. Um, uh, and I mentioned Kickstarter, where I, I bought the very expensive booze making device. Um, and not a lot else on Kickstarter. I think only like one or two things since <laughs> the last time we talked. Um, and nothing on Kickstarter has totally told me they're never going to ship. Although, Two more people have told me we're going to be late. Sorry. Um, just like I predicted. But they're still like, oh, we're still going to get it to you this year. And I'm like, yeah, right. Um, I would be remiss if I didn't mention, uh, for me, it's April. Um, and it being April, that means in a month, I'm doing uh, what I, I'm doing my bike ride up in Napa for the American Diabetes Association where I raise money. Uh, and I don't care about raising the money other than that it's nice that it happens. Um, I do it because I, I, I need to ride my bike because I'm fat. <laughs> uh, and I know I'm fat because when I went and had dinner with my nephew like a week and a half ago, he kept calling me Santa Keith. <laughs> pointing to my belly. And I'm like, you, that's... You're, you're not my favorite nephew anymore. <laughs> I mean, you weren't before either. But, um, so I, I need to get in shape, and I've been saying this for a long time, and it hasn't happened, so <laughs> we'll see. Uh, but I signed up for this bike ride, and they have levels. You know, you can bike 5 miles or 10 miles or 20 miles or 50 miles or 80 miles or 100 miles. Uh, and every time, since it doesn't kill me, I'm forced to bump up to the next degree, right? Because why? I know I can bike 50 miles and only feel like death afterwards. So why would I do that again? Uh, I may as well bike 80 miles and feel really like death. Um, so this year I'm biking 80 miles and I'm, I'm dragging Maureen with me in case I fall off my bike into a ravine because it's in the mountains and... And after I signed up for 80 miles, I was like, 80 miles, we biked 50. That's really only 30 more miles, right? And we're doing, on average, 15-ish miles an hour. So that's just, that's just two more hours on a bike. Um, and then I looked at someone else that did it, and they had a little altitude graph. Uh, and it turns out those, those extra 30 miles are pretty much straight uphill. Both ways, somehow. I, um, I, I couldn't figure that one out. I was like, mathematically, this doesn't work. It's just where's the, where's the downhill part? But it's got I maybe when maybe if you get to the top, they pick you up in a truck and bike you back <laughs> down, and then you you bike up again. That that'd be great, man. We sh we should do we should do that for like a ski resort for like people that that really want to get a lot of exercise. They should get on their bike and they should bike up the mountain. And then at the top, they get on the ski lift, and they ride back down. Because <laughs> biking downhill is crazy. You, you can kill yourself that way. Um, uh, anyway, this year again, I'll be doing the bike ride. Uh, I will be live tweeting it. Um, last year, I live tweeted it, 
and like four people were like, hey, sounds like fun. And I was like, well, you want me to invite you next year? And they're like, no, it doesn't sound like that much fun. <laughs> <laughs> sounds like fun when you do it. <laughs> and I'm, I'm having bacon and eggs right now. And I'm watching your live tweet stream of ugh. <laughs> I think if I do it this year, I'm going to tweet more guttural grunt <laughs> on the uphill parts. Maybe I'll pre-program them all in. Oh, man, that'd be great. I could write a, an app for my iPhone whenever I'm doing, you know, more than a 2.5% grade for three minutes, just just tweets like, oof, <laughs> oof. And there'd be like four hours of oof tweeted every three and a half minutes. <laughs> um, speaking of bikes, uh, we're, we're buying Loretta a bike, except it's not a bike. It's a trike because it's going to have three wheels because she doesn't like balancing on a bike, which I understand, because I, I mostly can balance on my bike, except for that once. <laughs> <laughs> when I was going kind of slow uphill, and there was a curb on one side of me, and try as I could, I just kept inching closer to that curb, and I kept being, I need to turn the wheel to get away from that curb. And then I turned the wheel, but I somehow kept getting closer, I think, because I wasn't turning the wheel far enough, and I, I think the road was tilting. That's, I'm blaming gravity here. Uh, it's also possible my, that, that I didn't have enough blood in my brain. Um, but there was a point when I realized, you are too close to that curb. You really got to jerk the wheel. So I started to jerk the wheel, and in doing so, I stopped pedaling just long enough to fall over, <laughs> which is embarrassing <laughs> when you do it and there's no one around, which there was. <laughs> if there had been people around, it would have been more embarrassing because, <laughs> as I've said before, there are a lot of people who go on this, but first of all, they all wear spandex, right? And they look very fit and, and trim and aerodynamic and they, they bike in packs. Uh, and like before I've said, there's this like 70 year old guy who rides a bike with no gears, does a hundred miles, passed me twice. <laughs> he had to, got back to the finish line and was like, oh, it's only 1030 in the morning, let's do it again. He didn't do that. Maybe this year, because I talked to him last year, because I got to the wine tent and I was drinking my wine because I'm kind of an alcoholic. <laughs> um, and after, after 50 miles on a bike, I'm allowed to have a glass of wine, darn it. Or seven, as it turns <laughs> out. Because um, for some reason, they'll just keep giving it to you. They're like, you just biked a really long way. Have as much wine as you want. It's not our wine. People, people donated wine. It's like, woo. Uh, and again, with the blood level being a little low, it's it was it was nice. Uh, aside from the fact that my entire body hurt. Uh, anyway, I, I found I was standing next to this guy, and he's like, oh yeah, I do this, you know, once a month. Sometimes twice a month in the summer, you know, I'm driving around to different ones. And I was like, oh, good Lord. Um, anyway, see, if, if, if someone else had seen me, you know, they'd have wanted to come up and make sure I was okay. Like, you, you just fell off a bike. Normally that happens when you're seven. <laughs> and then after that, you realize that you got to pedal and you got to have enough forward speed that centripetal force or centrifugal force or the gyroscopic effect or something. I don't remember exactly which one it is, right? That's, that's what keeps you upright until you stop moving, at which point you just tip over. Now, in my case, first of all, I tipped over, but as I said, I was right next to the curb. I tipped over into foliage. <laughs> it was like the lowest risk tip over anywhere, right? I like got back up and went leaf leaf and then i was done right not <sighs> anyway so i understand why the third wheel is nice because it's you, you you can't tip over with it's harder to tip over with three wheels if you're going really fast around a corner i think you can tip on three wheels and then you just you get you get the things that stick out you know the train wheels <laughs> I, I can get a i should get a set of those for my bike and make it instead of being thin it should be really wide, <laughs> and two wheels, and then I could put wings on them, 
<laughs> and then if I ever got going fast enough, then I can leave. No, no, this is I mean, this is <laughs> this is not enough time. Out of time before the, the bike ride. Um, anyway, so we're buying the ride of this tricycle, and then she's gonna ride it around. But she's too smart to do the tour de cure. Because I was like, we could sign you up for the short one. And she's like, no. <laughs> Here's the amazing thing. I said no, and I heard her through the headphones say no. At exactly the same time. Okay? I don't normally hear what she says through the headphones. That means she said no really loud. <laughs> um, completely different topic. Uh, Jay Leno announced he's retiring yesterday. Maybe. I mean, he announced he's retiring yesterday. I guess we're going to have to wait and see if Jay Leno retires this time. Because he's, he's like Brett Favre, right? Brett was like, this is great. I'm quarterback. I'm on top of the world. I'm going to retire and go out and I'm going to live in Louisiana. And the Packers were like, oh, we're sad to see you go. But you have been here so long. And we are paying you so much money. And it, we will really, we will have a cake for you. And then you can leave. Thank you very much. Football has been very good to you. You have been very good to football. Enjoy Louisiana. And then like six months later, he's like, yeah, I've done everything I could do in Louisiana. <laughs> and I bought the riding lawnmower. Grass is mowed. Um, my wife says I'm driving her crazy. <laughs> Can I come back and play football? And I'm like, no, we hired a new guy. We got a whole, we got a new guy. He's not bad. I don't know who it is because I don't really follow football. So that's what I assume is Jay Leno, right? Jay's going to go home. He's going to be in the garage. He's going to be like, I got 400 cars. Man, I could, I could spend the next 10 years fixing cars in my garage. And then four months later, all of his cars are going to be fixed. Because he's got a crew of people who have been fixing his cars for him. It's not like... There's car work to do. And then the wife's going to be like, you got to get a job. <laughs> you got to get a real job, like a nine to five daily job. Like a, sorry, I got to go. I got to leave the house, dear. One of those jobs. <laughs> Our priest said I should talk about thermostats. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, there's nothing interesting or fun about thermostats. I mean, they're... They're boring devices. They, they turn your heat on, they turn your heat off. It's, they're like, this thermostat has a great UI. And I'm like, really? Like this? Like, ah, now it's going to be warm. Or, oh man, it's really hot in here. How? I don't know why people are putting all this thought into thermostat. I... I thought thermostats were a solved problem, like, 50 years ago, when they invented the mercury switch, right? <laughs> Like, we, we got a coil, we got the two pieces of metal with the different melting points, so that as the temperature goes up and down, the, 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 we, we bend the coiled thing, and that tips the mercury switch, temperature goes on, temperature goes off, it's great. Um, so, yeah, whatever, thermostats. <laughs> someone else said, hey, Keith, can you explain this whole same-sex marriage thing to me? Uh, and I said, yes, I can. Have a seat, young man, and let's get coffees, and we'll spend three or four hours here. Uh, but I'm told I have like seven minutes left, so I'm going to compress it down to the... Um, it used to be that... The whole country and much of the world was not, didn't really recognize same-sex couples. And this is probably the last thousand years because Rome was filthy with them. Uh, I remember studying Latin. I had a nice Latin teacher, kind of a diminutive lady. And she would make up the craziest stories to try to get around explaining why all the Roman dudes seemed to wax poetic about other Roman dudes and not <laughs> other Roman ladies. He's like, oh, it, it was the custom of the period to blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, no, no, they, they were just dudes that liked other dudes a lot and then wrote about it in Latin. And then it survived until now and you were forced to stand up here and lie to 10th graders 
<laughs> about what it all meant. Um, but in America, and much of Western civilization, it has not been looked upon well for many, many years. Um, and it is slowly changing. Uh, more than half the country now thinks same-sex marriage. Two people of the same gender have exactly the same right to be as miserable in marriage as two people of opposite genders do. Um, it, it doesn't seem fair to restrict you know, two dudes from, from getting married and inheriting things. And then, so case finally got to the Supreme Court. Uh, two cases, really, right? First, there's the California Prop 8 case, where for some reason we voted to say, oh, this cannot be permitted. Um, and we should just voted the other way. And we could have saved all that cash that <laughs> was spent appealing things to the Supreme Court. We could have a quickie election. Just, hey, oops. I mean, we did it with prohibition, right? Like 1928, they were like, oh, alcohol's terrible. We got to stop this. And five years later, they were like, oops. <laughs> I don't remember the exact words, but like, like, like the 31st Amendment is like, let's imagine the 28th Amendment never existed. <laughs> like, what were we thinking? <sighs> See, we could do the same thing with the California, you know, uh, oops. And that's if we do put in the ballot. That's my suggestion for the title. It should be, you know, Proposition 171, oops. Um, and then it should be, you know, unamend the state constitution to indicate that marriage can only be recognized between a man and a woman. And then like 70% of the people would vote for it because they're like, what were we thinking? What were we thinking when we voted for it last time? Um, and then the other case was, was DOMA, the Defense of Marriage Act, passed by Congress in 1996. And they were like, Congress, we don't care if you're married or not, because the federal government doesn't marry anybody. They're like, oh, we let the states do that. Uh, it's the last thing we really let the states do. We do everything else, right? We're federal government. We've decided everything. But we're going to let the states decide who gets to get married, unless the states allow two dudes to get married. Because if that happens, we as Congress think that's icky. And so we were like, hey, that, this, this cannot stand. Uh, so it's, it, it, it's crazy. So eventually, here, here's my prediction. This is still a prediction because it hasn't come out yet. By the time you people see this, it'll, it'll have passed. And you'll be like, man, that Keith is a genius. Or you'll be like, I wonder what happened to Keith's April show. <laughs> uh, there was that mysterious part near the end where it just went all staticky even though he tapes digitally <laughs> oh well who could possibly have known uh, my prediction is they're going to strike that Doma thing down because they got it, it doesn't make sense um, and for the California thing they're going to go hey turns out if the governor doesn't want to defend the law then it's, it's like no they, okay, we're, over, we're overturning it. Now, I mentioned that court case to lead into my court case. Um, I don't think I told you all, but about last August, I was pulled over by a policeman for being a passenger in a car while not wearing a seatbelt, which kind of bugged me because when he pulled me over, I mean, first of all, I wasn't driving. So when you get pulled over and you're not the one driving, you're like, man, sucks to be the driver. <laughs> so the policeman's like, no, no, it's you. And you're like, what? I'm not even driving. This is not fair. And he's like, yeah, you didn't have your seatbelt on. I'm like, but I've got my seatbelt on now. And he's like, yeah, you, I saw you put it on. And I'm like, no, you didn't. Because I had it on. I didn't put it on. And he's like, no, I, I, you looked over and you saw me and you put seatbelt on. And I'm like. You know, I'm pretty sure I had it on. And Pete's like, I'm pretty sure he had it on. And the guy's like, no, I'm right. You take it anyway. Because <laughs> uh, Lord knows why. I'm not going to speculate. I'm not going to use the word quotas. <laughs> Ticket <laughs> quotas. <laughs> Although, this is just a hypothetical. Um, if you were a, a cop that had a certain quota and you were, were giving out tickets, you know, it seems to me if you give a ticket out for a no-point offense with a low fine that no one could possibly find any way to refute, you'd just do that all day long, just hypothetically. <laughs> um, so this made me grumpy and angry for a long time, because I'm like, I'm pretty sure I had my seatbelt on. 
And Pete's like, yeah, I'm pretty sure you did too. And I'm like, I'm going to get justice. And Pete's like, it's $130. Just pay the money. So I sent him the, the money but said, I'm going to get justice. So then I went, you know, took a half day off work or two hours off work and drove to the courthouse. And they said, how do you plead? And I said, not guilty. And he said, okay, see you in six weeks. So there's two hours of my life, $138 plus two hours of my life gone. Um, so then I'm like, okay, I'm going to subpoena the policeman's video camera. Because it was pointed straight at me. And if I didn't have my seatbelt on, it'll show it. And if I did have my seatbelt on, it'll show it. And then it'll stand up in court and go, ha! <laughs> Except when I was in court, there, there's no witness box really. So in my mind, I had all these great theatrics, but I, I really, if it had ever happened, I would have probably went, um, I think I have my seatbelt on there. And then they'd go, yeah, I think you do. <laughs> okay, we got bigger fish to fry than you, man. It's $138. Why, did, why are you wasting the court's time? <laughs> I, was ex I was fully expecting to hear, why are you wasting the court's time? Um, and then, then I, 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 I paid 70 bucks to subpoena the police. It costs money. It's crazy. I'm I'm out more cash and then like I they schedule the court date and then it turns out I couldn't make it to that day so I was like okay can I ask to move it and they're like yes and they don't answer questions like they if you ask a question they will give you so I was like and how do I ask to move it they're like oh you should have asked that in the first place um, you fill out this form and then I filled out the form and then they're like and then call back and we will tell you when your court date is. So I was like, okay, finally, I'm going to get justice. Um, and then I got a letter in the mail that said, we dismissed your case. Because we got to that hearing where we were going to reschedule it. Uh, but the policeman didn't come. And we were like, it's a seatbelt ticket. Just don't bother to come in. Why are you wasting the court's time? <laughs> in my head, it was much, much more... There's more action involved, uh, and I was played by a good-looking, like a Denzel Washington type. <laughs> um, and there were, you can't handle the truths, and yeah, yeah, really, it's thermostats. Really, what were you people thinking <laughs> going to a thermostat company? Um, and there's and there's more than one of you there. <laughs> <laughs> Like you, you get up in the morning. You're like, I'm, I'm gonna work on the thermostat today. And then it's like, well, how about if we turn it this way? It makes it hotter for a while, and then it starts making it cooler again, and then hotter. And or like, what if it clicked? What if your thermostat clicked as you turned it? Like that. That's what we have been missing in the thermostat world. It, it should click as you turn it. That's called the feedback. Otherwise, you might not.